Having used Photoshop since I was 8 years old, I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did when I was starting out. I care about you. I really do. So in this video, we're going to cover 10 Photoshop secrets or rules that I wish I knew when I was starting out that's going to help you big time. Trust me, one or more of them are going to blow your mind. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and check this out. If I were to select the gradient tool right here and create a gradient like this, as soon as we zoom in, there is banding all over the place. Now here's what's worse. If you were to create an adjustment layer on top of that by clicking on the adjustment layer icon, choosing something like curves and doing something like this, maybe, see, more and more banding, it becomes more pronounced like so. Now what does this tell us? As you begin to stack adjustments over adjustments in Photoshop, your images start to break a little. So that is why it is always recommended that you work in 16-bit. Yes, you can export in 8-bit, but work in 16-bit. Have a look at this. Yes, in this case, you can go to the gradient fill, check dither, that helps a lot, but you can still see it. If I go back to curves, and then if I increase the contrast even more like so, you're still able to see all of this banding in here. Even though green has been added, it's just too much. So if you go to image, mode, and 16 bits per channel, there you go, it's just gone magically. No matter how many adjustments you add, it's gonna be fine. And then when you're ready to export, you can always go to file, export, export as, or whatever export method you want to use. And here you can save it as a JPEG, which is 8-bit anyway. Or if you do wanna convert it to 8-bit in Photoshop, you can always create a stamp visible layer at the top by pressing Control, Alt, Shift, and E. This creates a merged layer of everything that is on the canvas right now. And right now, if you go to image mode and change it to 8 bits per channel, it's gonna be fine. One of the other big problem that I faced starting out was colors changing during export or even during the edit process. For example, here's a raw file. By the way, this is from world famous dog photographer, Kaylee Greer. She's incredible. Definitely check out her work right here. Now let's click on open right here. So I've opened this in Photoshop. Now let's say you saved it as a regular JPEG by going to file, export, export as, or save a copy, whatever you choose. But here, as you can see, you have a preview and the colors are changing. This was absolutely not the color that we worked with. Now, sometimes if we go to file, something like save a copy, and if we choose JPEG, let's name this Kaylee and click on save. Full quality, hit OK. Even at this point when the JPEG looks OK, if we click on it, the colors are OK, but you may upload it to social media or Instagram and the colors change. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is, Pro Photo RGB, have a look at the color space. It's not sRGB. Web supports sRGB. So whenever you export it for a web, you wanna make sure you convert it to sRGB. One easy way of doing that is by going to File, Export, and using this module, Export As. You get a real-time preview, just scroll down, and you wanna make sure both are checked. Convert to sRGB and embed color profile, just to be super sure, and then export it it will be fine. And so your colors will remain intact when you export or upload it on the web. Speaking of colors, let's open a photo with excellent colors. This is a raw photo, so it directly opens in camera raw, it should. And I've made a few adjustments right here to make it look better. I actually took this in Paris. Now, if I were to click on open, I cannot change any of those adjustments. They're just gone. Let's say you wanted to decrease the exposure or the highlights or play with the shadows. You cannot do that anymore. Instead, do it another way. Let's close it. We don't want to save it. And I'm going to open that DNG again. It opens up in camera raw, and when it does, don't click on open. Instead, you can hold the shift key and click on open object. Alternatively, you can click on the arrow right there and click on open as object. That's it. Click on that. Now this opens as a smart object. This gives us a lot of flexibility. You can keep on adding adjustment layers. For example, I'm going to add a color lookup table maybe something like crisp, warm, and decrease the opacity to about 20%. And then you feel like maybe I needed to increase the contrast or increase or decrease the highlights. You can always double click on the thumbnail of this smart object. It gets you back to camera raw with all of the raw adjustments that you had made. And you can make adjustments to it according to your wish. Let's say you wanted more contrast and more details in the highlights and maybe more shadows. Hit OK. There you go, all of those changes made. So just a reminder, whenever you import a raw photo into Camera Raw, always remember to hold the Shift key and click on Open Object instead of just 
open. Before we move to our next step, this video is brought to you by Piximperfect Pro, the ultimate way to master Photoshop from start to finish and beyond. We have a curriculum of more than 100 videos that's going to help you learn Photoshop step by step, one baby step at a time. So you never have to stay confused and jump from one random video to another. It's in a structured path. In these courses, you learn Photoshop by concept, so you never have to memorize the steps. My goal is to make you the master so that you can make decisions on what to do depending upon what vision you have. And the students are loving it. These are the comments from inside the course and I didn't even ask anyone to leave those. And right now there's a special offer going on with Piximperfect Pro, so check the link in description to check it out. Back to the video and to the next step and this is about masking. Here I have changed the color of his shirt. First we added the base color, shadows and highlights. All of them use the same mask. Now there's a problem with that. Let's say you wanted to edit the mask somewhere. You wanted to erase it from here by painting with black inside of the mask. Now, if I wanted to do that, the problem is I have to do the same with all of the other layers. I have to select the shadow mask and just play with that. I have to select the highlight mask and remove that from there. And it is such a hassle. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is even bigger. When you have the same masks stacked on top of the other, the edges go crazy. Have a look around the edges. As you can see, there's a bright red halo. Can you spot that right here? Now, to fix all of these problems, the solution is simple. Select the topmost layer. Hold the shift key, select the bottommost layer, making an adjustment, then press Ctrl or Command G. Now, take one of the masks and place it on the group and then delete the rest of the masks. Select the mask, press the delete key. Select this mask, press the delete key. So now, that problem is gone. Just to share with you the before and after, here in history, I'm going to create a snapshot right here of my current state. This is how we opened it with three separate masks. Look at the edge. And this is how it is right now. So much more natural. And right now, if I wanted to adjust the mask, I just have to adjust one mask. So with that mask selected, you can take the brush, you can erase, you can add. That's not going to be an issue. So whenever you're making an adjustment in the same area or tending to add the same mask over and over again, it just makes sense to group all of those layers and just use one mask. Now, this rule definitely goes without saying, but there's another tip hidden inside of that. So with the background layer selected, let's say you made a copy of the background layer and then you went to filter, camera raw filter, and you made some adjustments. For this example, I'm just going to go to presets and I made a preset recently, which is nice, warm green. Let's add that, hit OK. Now it's applied, but can you tell the mistake I did here? I didn't convert this layer into a smart object. So if I wanted to change anything like the contrast, like the highlights back in camera raw, I'm stuck. There is nothing I can do right here. So instead, always, whenever you can, convert the layer into a smart object before applying anything. So with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. Then go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. Hit OK. Now this is a smart object. Alternatively, let's go back. You can also right click on it and choose convert to smart object, right? Same thing right here. Now, if you go to filter, camera raw filter, I'm going to apply the same preset right here. Hit OK. Preset is applied. Everything is nice. But the great part right here is that I can always go back by double clicking on camera. Raw. If you cannot see it, just open it up from here. Double click on whatever filter you have added and you can change the values directly. Let's say you wanted some more contrast, maybe less exposure, hit OK, changed at any point in time. Now, all the time it may be inconvenient to right click and choose convert to smart object or going to filter. Let's assign a shortcut to it. Let's go back to how it was with the background layer selected. I'm going to make a copy by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Now let's go to edit keyboard shortcuts here. There you go. And then let's go to shortcuts for application menus. Scroll down, you will find layer, open that up. Scroll down further, you'll find smart objects somewhere here. There you go. And for convert to smart objects, let's assign a shortcut. Click here and give it any shortcut you want. I'm going to press Command Shift D maybe. Now this is already a shortcut for reselect, but I don't use that, so that's fine. Click on accept. Now this is your shortcut, hit OK for converting a layer into a smart object. So with that layer selected, if you press the shortcut that you just assigned, in my case, it is Command Shift D. This is right now a smart object. So always convert a layer into a smart object whenever you can. I know there are some limitations. Also assign a shortcut so it's faster for your workflow. Now, as you're working through your document, I beg you, please, please do not trust autosave. Yes, always develop the muscle memory 
of pressing Ctrl or Command S from time to time. Whenever you're doing something essential, let's say you created this layer, press Ctrl or Command S. And then you created something that took a little bit of time, Ctrl or Command S. Now, how do you know whether your document is saved or not? Let's say you were to create a brand new layer. And then with the brush, you paint it a little bit around the corner, like so. Now you will see that there's an asterisk right here, which means that there are unsaved changes. As soon as you press Ctrl or Command S, those changes that you made are now saved and the asterisk goes away. So develop the habit of looking at that and pressing Ctrl or Command S. And the second thing is definitely set up auto save to the most frequent setting. Let's go to Photoshop settings by going to Photoshop settings. On Windows, it is under edit preferences. Then go to file handling. Inside of that, in the automatically save recovery information, you want to make sure this is checked no matter what. Whether hell breaks loose, you shouldn't care. This has to be checked. And then I set it to five minutes, the lowest setting right here. So every five minutes, it's going to save recovery information. Hit OK. Restart Photoshop for the changes to absolutely take effect. And if you want even more protection, you're working on something very essential. You have spent a lot of time into this and you don't trust your computer or even if you trust it, you're scared that it might crash, there might be a power outage, your files can get corrupt. In those cases, and especially if you're a professional, use cloud documents. Now this document is already saved in my local drive. Do that first by going to File, Save As, and definitely save a copy of that PSD by clicking on Save, it's Photoshop document, that's fine. Have a local version, but also go to File, save as and in here choose save to cloud documents i've already saved it by the way i'm going to do it one more time and click on save now this won't work if you're using a captain jack sparrow version of photoshop but if you're a professional you shouldn't be using captain jack sparrow versions and the great part about photoshop cloud document is that whenever you make any change let's say i move the fire a little bit like this and make it larger all right hit enter or return and i'm going to turn everything back on like so now even if i don't save it and i close it it's going to automatically save it. It's going to take care of that. Secondly, it's always available and updated in the cloud. So if you open it in another device, this file will be available for you. Let's say you're traveling, you forgot to take it. Yep, you can start editing from right then and there. And just so you know, you can access your cloud documents directly in Photoshop by going to your home screen and clicking on your files. And here are your cloud documents. I've made most of my thumbnails and saved it as a cloud document because those are important. And another great advantage of cloud documents is that it saves version history. So if you go to window and then version history, it's not available in regular Photoshop document that you store locally. For example, in January 7th, this was my version. I maybe made a change. So at any date, if I had made a change to it, it will save that. I know it fills up the cloud and takes space, but it's absolutely worth it for those very important Photoshop documents. Now, I don't know why Adobe has turned this on by default, but it's just crazy. Have a look at this. So if we were to select the crop tool, and let's say we cropped this photo like so. Beautiful photo, reminds me of my childhood. Those were the days. Hit enter or return. This is fine. But let's say I want to get back all of those areas. Maybe I want to create a different version of this, maybe a banner. If I click again with the crop tool and try to get back those areas, it's just gone. It's absolutely gone. It's deleted. Those pixels are lost. So how do we get that back and how do we prevent this from happening? I don't know why Adobe has turned this on by default. You always, always want to make sure that delete cropped pixels is turned off. The first thing you do when you start Photoshop for the first time, just you want to make sure that delete cropped pixels is turned off. Now, if you click with the crop tool and if you crop it like this, hit enter or return, you click again, you have access to everything back. So just a little tip, you always want to make sure delete cropped pixels is turned off. I would ask Adobe to actually remove this. The next tip is more of a rule that came in recently and it's common sense, but it's important to understand. And that is never work on beta software on a production machine. If you are a professional, you create photos for your client, you edit photos for your client, you create some absolutely incredible digital artworks and you do that professionally and it's your main computer, please do not install beta software onto it. A few videos ago, I covered a worldwide Photoshop crash that only happened if you installed a beta version of Photoshop. So if you did, no other version was working. Even the general versions were not working and you needed to uninstall the beta version for everything to work. So the conclusion is for any creative software, 
please do not install beta software on a production machine. Let's say you wanted to use the subject cutout for another document for another design. So if I go here and pick this cutout right here, select this layer, press Ctrl or Command C and create a document with the same dimensions. This is 38402160, right? Let's go to File, New and let's create 38402160 version 2. Click on Create. And if you were to paste it by pressing Ctrl or Command V, this is not at the exact same position. In this case, it was right here attached to the bottom, but with this one, it's just somewhere else. If you want to paste in place, which means paste in the exact same position, since this is the exact same dimension, you can press, instead of Ctrl or Command V, press Ctrl or Command Shift and V. It will paste it in the exact same position. So those are all the Photoshop rules I wish I knew when I was getting started, but there are many more and many more to come in future videos. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to master Photoshop from start to finish and beyond, definitely check out Piximperfect Pro. There's a special offer going on at the moment. Oh, and how can I forget? A very happy Valentine's Day to you. I hope you take the time to appreciate the people in your life, appreciate the people who love you. And I appreciate you for being there with me for this video. Thank you so much. That means the world to me. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Yeah.